From the shores of Malibu, where the waves are pumping, to the Great Wall of China, and back to the streets of Las Vegas, where the UFC is coming, we are live. This is It's Time Radio, the show where we talk about what you think about, but maybe afraid to voice. Do not worry. We will voice it for you. We talk about it all, and it's time. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, politics, TV, UFC, you name it, we talk about it. Uh, this week, I'm here with my co-host and producer, TJ DeSantis. TJ, it's you and me, babe. Let's go over some news from the pa- uh, past week. And let's definitely talk about the UFC from two weeks ago. We didn't touch on it last week. I got to bring a couple things about that show, too. Oh, absolutely. I'm good, Buff. Uh, you know, summer's heating up. So is uh, the 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 news cycle. And uh, obviously, this UFC cycle is about to get absolutely crazy here in the uh, latter part of uh, June and July. It's International Fight Week. It's the craziest time of the year. I know. You know, I just I'm getting the uh, I have not appeared at the expo on fight week. I've not appeared at the expo for probably, well, since pre COVID mm. I, I would open up the expo you know, right. in the morning. And, uh, but now I'm proud to say that um, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. I can't help it. It's time cologne. Mm-hmm. You're going to see it at the expo. You know why? Why you're going to bring me a bottle. It's going to be put in the UFC stores. Are you going to bring me a bottle? No, you're going to buy a bottle. <laughs> of course, I'm going to bring you a bottle, TJ. Yeah, I'll get you a bottle. You're the I'm last right now. You're going to get it. I guarantee you. I'm going to go it. buy a bottle right now, Buff. But I'll reimburse you. How's that? Right. Buy it off Amazon. I'll reimburse you. Um. Anyway, that's pretty great news. I mean, that's really, really cool. So I'm excited about that. And I'm going to be announcing um, working with one of the new sponsors and then uh, Fight Pass. I think we might do something for Fight Pass while we're there. But I'll be at the expo in some way, shape, or form on Friday. People are asking me to do stuff on Saturday. Show day. You can't, can't do, do anything, anything on Saturday. I can't do anything. Yeah. No, I got to be 100% ready for the show. 100%. It's a big show. Big show. No, big show for sure. For sure. And, you know, with that being said, let's get while we're on the subject, this is how big that show is. You've got two championship fights. We've got yep. Yair Rodriguez and Alexander Volkanovsky. I can't wait to see that fight. Oh, it's a phenomenal fight. I cannot wait. Champion and versus then, champion. Pardon me? Champion versus champion. I know. It's amazing. It's going to be awesome. And then Brandon Marino um, against Potosia, Alejandre. Yep. Um, flyweight title, featherweight title, all good stuff. So, And Robert Whitaker, and I really am looking forward to this. The Duplessis fight and the Robert Whitaker fight. That's a fight I'm looking forward to, big time. There, I mean, there's just huge fights, left and right. Nonstop. Jalen Turner and Dan Hooker. Yeah. Oh. Doesn't get any better. And Bo Nickel coming in for his second shot in the octagon against uh, Trisano Gore. So I'm not familiar with Trisan, Trishan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trishan Gore. see for a little while. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I'm drawing a blank, but obviously he wouldn't be fighting Bo Nickel if he didn't know what he's doing. And Robbie Lawler. I know. Yeah. I thought Robbie Lawler was done. No, this is it. This is it? This is it. All right, Jimmy Crute, Sean Brady. I can't wait. Big show. All right, so that's just July 8th. Now, uh, since we're on UFC subject, let's talk about the big show that happened in Vancouver. And by the way, as always, and it's been a long time since we've been in Canada, but the Canadian fans, again, proved that they are some of the most passionate rabbit fans oh, UFC yeah. fans in the world. Yeah, question. I was talking to Longo not long ago about his experience having to uh, be in the corner of Matt Serra against GSP in Montreal. And he's like, they would have killed me if if they would have let him. And it's like, I believe it. Those Canadian fans, they're uh, they're cut from a different cloth. Yeah, but they're not going to kill anybody because they're the nicest people in the world. Like uh, I said, when I've you're never... fighting George St. Pierre, though, they might. Yeah, maybe. But I've never met a rude Canadian. I've just met a lot of inebriated ones. But <laughs> I'm telling you, it was it. There's a nice. It, they kill you with kindness. Oh, for sure. Everywhere yeah. Go. I had a meal with uh, my partners at. Uh, uh, I work for the lar- largest mortgage company in Canada called Domin- Dominion Lending. Um, and I've done a bunch of uh, TV commercials for them. And we all had dinner on Friday night. And one thing about Vancouver, if you're a foodie. Yeah. Okay. Seriously, if you're a foodie, you're in heaven. Yeah. There's some yeah, really I good it. restaurants there. And then uh, at the show, George Shea Pierre was so funny. He comes out to me, Bruce, Bruce, I was out till 430 in the morning. I was having fun. I was having fun. I'm so tired. And every time I pass by, I'm sitting in the front row. He goes, I'm so tired. And three hours into the show, he texts me, Bruce, Bruce, I'm going to the mansion. Going to go with some hockey players. We have a private VIP room. Come with me. Come with me. I thought you were tired, George. Right. You know? I know you're retired. 
but you're not right. tired. No, yeah. no, he's going to get that third, fourth, fifth, sixth wind if he needs it. I'll tell you, he's funny. He's a funny cat. Definitely. Yeah. Funny. But thank you to all the Canadians. I, the courtesy, um, what can I say? Beautiful place. Vancouver's a beautiful city. Yeah, no, 100%. I've only been there one time. Uh, unfortunately, it was in winter, so it was uh, pretty chilly. Uh, but but even for how far north it is, it's a pretty temperate climate. It's 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 a nice uh, city, to say the least. It's a beautiful city. So let's go into the fights that happened. I just want to mention a couple of uh, that deserve mentioning. Dan Ige. Oh, Quite come on. You can't be, I, no offense to Dan Ige. Let's not bury the lead, Buff. Let's start with Amanda Nunes. She's the greatest of all time. Amanda Nunes, greatest of all time. I was not aware she was going to lay down her gloves and her belts that night. I, I love announcing Amanda. Had I known I don't know that, if I, she knew, Bruce. Like, if I, think I knew. Kind of in, well, I think it was her decision then and there. It, it was done before this, and they were aware of it before this, but nobody told me about it. Not that they had to, because quite I don't frankly, think so. I've I, only... I think they knew it was a possibility, Bruce. But she went over to Dana and said, "Yeah, now's now's the time." Right after, I, the fight. I okay, but I heard on the inside it was sure. I think everyone knew it was a possibility, but I don't think that she knew for certain until the fight was over. And rightfully so, that's thoroughly understandable. I agree with you. So, with that being said, had I known right the possibility thereof, I've only bowed to two fighters in the history of the UFC in the twenty seven twenty plus seven plus years I've been working in it. I would have bowed to Amanda because she truly is a goat. Who There's are the no other point. two? Randy? Randy and Anderson Silva. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, I definitely would have given Amanda a bow. Um, Arena Adana, give her all the credit in the world, but I, I hate to use this term. She was a punching bag for five rounds. I, You know, I was talking about this with Longo and extra rounds immediately following and you know, I, I think Irene Aldana is incredibly talented. I think she's a phenomenal boxer, has one of the best pure boxing uh, approaches in in women's mixed martial arts as a whole. Um, but I think she's a little bit dear in the headlights, and for good reason. You're standing in front of Amanda Nunes. Uh, it's going to be hard to fire on all cylinders and and be mentally right when you got her staring you down. I got to tell you, man, um, all the credit to Irene. But, man, she looked like E.T. at the end of that five rounds. You know, it's I mean, tough. It, she got beat up. She got beat yeah. up. She's a warrior. There's no question. She's an absolute, absolute warrior. And Paul Feller brought all it up. Credit, all. all my credit to Reina, all my love and credit to Amanda. And I just got to say one thing. I think about fighters. People ask me a question in interviews. I go, who's your favorite fighter? Who, who do you like to be introduced to? Right. I really realized after the retirement and watching the, the uh, announcement I gave her that I love announcing Amanda Nunes. She's yeah. one of the people I love announcing the Lioness. And it just, it, uh, it warms my heart that she's retired. Uh, she and her partner have a beautiful baby girl. They developed a life. Another one on the way. Yeah. Another one on the way? Another baby on the way, yeah. Another surrogate? Uh, yeah, so it's Amanda's eggs uh, that have been implanted into uh, Nina. So. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah. So, okay, let me, I forget. Nina gave birth to their daughter? Yes, yep. All right, so Nina's going to give birth to daughter number two? Yeah, but it's with Amanda's eggs. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what? I need some biological information here. Okay. Um, well, it's like a surrogate. Taking a woman's eggs and putting right. it in another. Yeah, well, that's yeah, what they do. That's what they do when they do a surrogate. Right. Yeah. And then you have the, the donor. Right. The Correct. Yep. To, okay. Interesting. Do they know who right. the donor is? Who's the male yeah, donor? Yeah, yeah. I, I, we don't need to get into all that. That's not... Like anything, I'd love to hear it. I know, I mean, but yeah, creating another champion for God's sake. No, it's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, all that, all that aside, and I wasn't even kidding. I just kind of like got stumped there for a second. I'm, well, I mean, it's it's modern, you know, medical it's, it's awesome. technology. It's crazy. crazy. It's awesome. Look, she's made millions of dollars. All the right to retire. Let's see how she does. All the credit. Going to miss you, Amanda, but we're not going to miss you. I'm sure we're going to see you around the octagon. Charles Oliveira. Yeah. Yeah. Benil Dariush. Wow. That was like Grant went through Richmond. It was like, do you know that Charles Oliver goes through Benil like that? Who goes nobody, through nobody. nobody. Do, you, you, do you know that uh, Charles Oliveira's finishing rate is north of 91%? He's only won like three decisions his entire career. It's amazing. Almost all of his uh, wins are by way of submission. Uh, he's got like four or five TKOs. Uh, pick your poison, though, man. Like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he's going to have better success against uh, Islam Mikashev, um than he did the first time. It's going to be very tough. Uh, it's a tough fight. Uh, but, I mean, what 
Th- there aren't too many athletes that get stopped in the way that he was against Mikashev, go out and win one fight, and then have everyone demand a rematch right away. Yeah. But they are, and God bless them for it. It's going to be a phenomenal fight whenever it happens. No question. No question. We'll see what's up. Uh, a couple of the good mentions, the Miranda Maverick fight was definitely a brawl. There's no question Yeah, that. 100%. Totally. And uh, all credit to everybody that put their uh, blood, sweat, and tears in the line in the octagon that night. It was a heck of a night, a lot of fun. And um, it loud not... during that main event intro, by the way, Buff. Did you feel that one? Yeah, you know how I block out the crowd. And when I say block out, I respect and, and feel the crowd's right. energy. But you're in your That's moment. Me going. But I could hear him ver- verbally in my ear. I could I could hear him going with me on its time and some yeah. other stuff. It was very, very, very cool. Very yeah, cool. that's great. All right, so there's UFC talk. Uh, there's a UFC this weekend. I don't have the lineup. I'm sorry. I will not be there. Uh, Joe Martinez will be taking the reins as announcer. Um, but actually, wait, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's Marvin Vittori versus Jared Cannonier. So Marvin Vittori, yeah, and Jared Cannonier. That should be a good brawl for it all. Yeah, a very pivotal fight uh, top the middleweight division. Awesome. Okay. All right, everybody. Reminder, everybody, check out our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to the video so you can enjoy this even more. Looking at TJ, forget about me. It's all good. Uh, it's time cologne, by the way, mentioned on the UFC, but I have to say I got a shill again. Still top-selling cologne on Amazon in the United States and in England, and we just got released in 30 countries in Europe. That's amazing. 30 countries in Europe. Did you awesome. expect it to take off this big? Yes. Oh, okay. At least you go do something it. to do it big. I mean, I, I that how's that for a confident answer? Was that a confident answer? I mean, it's right? very confident. I don't know if I believe it, but yeah, no, I. You knew it was going to be the, this successful. I didn't get in this to make this some small little venture. I got into this to build this into a half billion dollar company. See, my my uh, fear of being overconfident would get in the way of me ever being that confident about bringing well, a there, product to market. There's cocky confident, and then there's cocky ego confident and then there's realistic confident based on sales based on sure proof. but but you don't have any of that proof when you first bring it to market no but the ticklers out there when we went to the distributors around the world i i'm pretty blown away how the it's time brand has really grown in the last couple of years it's i mean it you know me i i have right the it's time brand as a whole not the right. cologne like just everything that you've touched just everything yeah just yeah. hold the demand for it and, i mean and I, i'll tell you straight up bruce I mean, i'm not trying to take away the shine of the the cologne by any means but what you've done with puncher's chance in the last few years has just what a hard space to get into but let alone get into it and then thrive like that's huge respect for that thank you very much i appreciate that tj you know uh I was looking at the Father's Day video I did for Punchers Run, talking about the four versions I have out, you know, the original Punchers and the 12 year, the 14 year, and the new single barrel version, Undisputed. I'm like, wow, we've got four different, actually five. I We take barrels and we make other bottles that are 116 proof. Five different types of Punchers Chance out there, and they're all selling like hotcakes. I'm really proud of it. It's a On knockout. Cologne, thing, I'm going sh- to show you something that I shouldn't, but I'm gonna, I am gonna. I got to. Remember I told you you'd be going through airports Right, yeah, the duty free free stuff. shops. Yeah. All right, well, this is going to happen in in uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi and other places soon. When you walk into the duty free shops, you see the stanions. Yeah, so that's like life size. Yeah, no. They, they wow. Matter. Totally. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's really really cool. So you have Matt McConaughey hawking his cologne, Julie Roberts hawking her perfume, and then me in the middle. I'm going to laugh my ass off. <laughs> I can't wait to see the photo of you standing next to it. Standing next to it, but fainting in front of it. No, I yeah, no, it'll be cool. It'll be cool. So all good there. So anyway, check it out. Guys, uh, Father's Day gifts still available in time. Well, no, it's too late now. But anyway, they've been getting a lot of Father's Day sales. Oh, you, actually- probably, you probably can still get something from Amazon with their quick shipping. If you're listening to the show, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you it's got to hustle time. right now. It's Friday. Yeah. Father's Day Sunday, okay? Right. But I'm saying like Amazon delivers on Sundays. Trust me. Sounds good. Go for it, everybody. Enjoy it. Dad will love it. Wives will love it. Women love it. They all love it. Okay. I love it, too. All right. Let's get in the news. Let's <laughs> get right. in the news. Where do okay, you want to start, Bob? Trump, Trump's been indicted. That's correct. Okay. He's been indicted. He's uh legal team searching for lawyers to represent him. Um, I'm sure there are many uh, willing and able participants who want to take that check. Yeah, they want to take that check for sure. 
All right, so we'll see how that pans out. It's not going to prevent him from running for president. No. Um, unless it gets beat. I mean, it probably won't even get settled until after the next president's chosen. No, but there's some very serious charges, and I don't know how they're going to carry out, but uh, this whole thing now is coming to more of a uh, a nut closure than anything. I'd hate to wake up every day and be in this position to deal with that kind of stuff. It's crazy. He looks stressed out. Wouldn't you be? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not saying it's not warranted. I'm just saying he looks stressed out. Yeah, I don't care how confident, whatever. I mean, my God, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I know everybody's itching about this. We got to talk about it. All right. Let me just treat this with tender gloves. Mm. Uh, yesterday, there was a news story that came out about Conor McGregor, but I want to go back to Tuesday. I'm very happy that Conor McGregor and his wife, Dee Devlin, mm -hmm. are going to be welcoming their fourth child. I think that's amazing. Yep. That's awesome. They're going to have another baby. That was reported on TMZ and other locations uh, back on Tuesday. Now, allegedly, allegedly on Wednesday, or rather Thursday, rather, it came out that um, Connor had quite a night at that NBA championship game in Miami. There are allegations. At the allegations. But before that ever happened, uh, you know, the halftime show, they well, let's talk about the halftime show. Okay. The halftime show where it was timed or planned with the mascot to come out with boxing gloves and do his thing. And Connor was pumping his, um, his ice freeze product spray, whatever it is. Uh, sorry, I'm not avoiding it. I just forget the name. And then he proceeded to punch the mascot full force. It seems. And then ground and pound him with it with one or two shots or one shot on the ground. The mascot was taken to the hospital. Okay. So here's my thing, TJ. Mm -hmm. It was one other instance where the punching of a mascot happened. I think it was with an NBA player. You got kids in the audience. Do you really think that's a proper skit to begin with, even though Connor sent the kid, to, the mascot to the hospital? Do you think that's even proper to show that? Sure, you, sure. You, because you it's okay. Yeah, because I don't remember the San Diego chicken used to get into fights all the time. Was that okay? Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's a crazy thing. All right. Especially if, especially if the, the mascot came out with boxing gloves on. And I'm surprised, you know, with all this, uh, he doesn't get a lawsuit on him for that, but obviously it's just been a, a, a little giggle, giggle time. I mean, okay, it's that important that right. the mascot went to the hospital. Like, that's, you know, I, I assume that was an accident. Connor, Connor just made a movie. You should learn how to pull his punches. Okay, let's put it that yeah, but um, you don't know what you're hitting when you're hitting the the mascot head. Yeah, I know. You think it's such yeah. a big head or whatever. Whatever the case might be. That was one incident. Now, the other right. incident happened. Remember, I just said they announced a baby on the other day. Allegedly, now Connor's been accused again. Oh, man, this is crazy. He's been accused of... I, I hate to say this. He's been accused of raping a woman at the NBA Finals game. Yeah. Did you read how this went down, supposedly? Uh, I read the headline. The, pardon me? I read the headline and that was about it. All right. I'll just, again, everybody listening, this is alleged. Okay. This is alleged. So she's suing the NBA, she's suing the Miami heat security. Um, basically she says that uh, according to letters, let's see here. Just read the story. Yeah. I'll just read the story. According to letters, the woman was able to get, Oh wait. According to uh, letters, he violently sexually assaulted a woman inside a men's bathroom. The letters claim the NBA and heat security helped separate the woman from her friend and then forced her into a restroom that McGregor and security guard were already inside of. Uh, security refused to let the woman exit, right? Remember, this is the security for the uh, uh, arena, I gather. Or allow anyone else, including her friend, inside the bathroom. The lawyer claims uh, McGregor emerged from inside a handicap stall. Things happened after that. I really don't want to mention him on the air. Uh, Where's the story from? This is TMZ. Now you could probably read the same thing elsewhere. No, I but just wanted you to credit it for the you know sake of uh, the show's purposes. So yeah, T this is TMZ. So um, the the woman supposedly forced McGregor off her. Situations happened. Uh, she reported it while she was at the police station. One of the police officers that claims here uh, told her she should get legal help. And uh, what she did, and now she's seeking settlements with the NBA, the Heat, and McGregor in lieu of litigation, which they'll probably try to, you know, settle. Nobody wants to go to court. Yeah, but settle. no mention of charges? No charges. Okay, I'll read what happened, okay? I mean, well, I, I, I'm just going to read the story. Should I read the story? I, that's what I said to do. Okay, you got it. 
All right. Security refused to let the woman exit or allow anyone else, including her friend, inside the bathroom. Lawyer then claims McGregor emerged from inside a handicapped stall, shoved his tongue in the victim's mouth, and aggressively kissed her. According to letters, the woman was able to get McGregor off her by telling him she had to urinate. Then McGregor forced her to have uh, an, a sexual act with him. Uh, he's then accused of grabbing the woman, pinning her against the wall before attempting the, the act. Uh, she... the. The letters claim the woman was able to elbow McGregor repeatedly, which gave her a window to escape. However, she allegedly fled in such a hurry, she left her purse, uh, which which Mitchell says her attorney that McGregor's security guards held hostage until she pleaded with them for its return. Uh, according to the letters, the woman finally got away from it all, went to report the assault to local authorities on Sunday morning. Uh, Mitchell tells us an officer then encouraged her to seek out an attorney, which obviously she did. So there we are. The UFC okay, addressed but the alleged... But are there charges? Not yet. See, that's what's weird about it. I'm not well, dismissing anything by any means. I'm not saying that she's making anything up. It's just, it's weird that you go to the authorities and then they tell you to go get a lawyer, but they don't proceed with pressing any charges. It's all alleged, TJ. It's all alleged. The, right, uh, but when you make allegations towards uh, someone in this nature with the proper authorities, they then do an investigation and then levy charges generally. Well, right now, the Heat released a statement that they're aware of the allegations of conducting a, conducting a full investigation. That's not the police. The NBA uh, had a statement of its own. They're aware of the allegations, and they're working with the team to gather more information. The UFC addressed the alleged incident, saying two aware of the claims and working on getting more information. Uh, the UFC allowed the legal process to play out before making any additional statements, which they should. Right. That's what I'm saying. Where's the legal process in all this? Not like the 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 lawsuit litigations. But where? I mean, where, right now, where it's, right now it's all alleged. Right now it's all alleged. It's all like yeah. But said. when you make allegations again, Bruce, if you go to local authorities, they investigate. Are the police not investigating? It has no mention of police investigation. That's weird. Well, it just says that she reported it to the police. But then, generally, you hear about the police conducting an ongoing investigation. Well, I would think if she reported, filed a claim, they got to investigate. What did come out today? What did come out today? Uh huh. Uh, they have a video. They have a video, if you look at, uh, go to TMZ, there's a video um, where you see McGregor uh, confront the girl, turn around. It looks like he held her hand as he's she's following behind him with his security. So they, they, they have a video of the two of them actually communicating at that time. Before or after the incident? Before. Huh. That's all I know. It's just we'll weird. It it's just weird when you hear about these things. This is what I worry about with the 24-hour news cycle is you get these stories coming out that are like kind of fleshed out stories, but it's like, Bruce, we're still in the very early information gathering of this process, you know, and, and it sounds like everything's, I mean, like I, I get worried when stories come out, when the investigation, the initial investigation isn't even being completed yet. I, I'm with you. So again, alleged. We'll see what happens. But uh, this is not the first time an incident similar to this has been reported. And you know, right. it, it's just a, it's just a like you're guilty to prove innocence in people's eyes, but in America, you're innocent to proven guilty. So we'll see what happens. I just want them to prove something. I do too. Whatever the case might be. But uh, anyway, Happy Father's Day, Connor. That's all I can say. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate. You know, these allegations are, are very serious. And, uh, you know, you hope that the proper investigation on both sides gets, you know, done and taken care of. But it, it's proper just seems to be the, Proper yeah. seems to be the word of choice when it comes to coming. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Buffer, you had to say it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, anyway, I hope not. I hope it's just I hope it's just a bag of wind. That's all I hope. Okay, we'll see what happens. Uh, Pat Sajak is retiring from uh, Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, I uh, saw that. I mean, he's been on that show for, what, 30 years, 40 years? He's been on uh, that show, I think, uh, it's his 41st season, so that's 40, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. 40 years. Now, I heard reportedly, I mean, the money this man's made and Vanna White have made off the show is phenomenal. Yeah. We're talking like 30, 40 million, 20 to 40 million a year. I still want to see you be a game show host before it's all said and done. I have a really cool game show concept I'm pitching right now. And I, I mean, would love to do a, I would love to do a game show. You know what's cool about game shows, TJ? Everything. I think you're on that. You think you're filming them every day? No, you film no. Them for like three, four weeks. You know, maybe yeah. two weeks. You get them all yeah. done. 
you film a week a day generally at least that's how they do uh like jeopardy they do five yeah. episodes of jeopardy a day yeah exactly so now they're thinking about um who's the guy that does everything from entertainment tonight or from america's got talent simon know. cowell no the blonde guy the blonde guy ryan seacrest they're thinking about ryan seacrest that's uh, what i read too all right they're not going to replace Vanna White when she's done, are they? Vanna White? You talk about Ariani being an octagon girl up until recently, you know, for some 15 plus years. Vanna White, when you realize, I mean, what woman has done the job that she's done for 30, 40 well, years? Well, I just think she's irreplaceable. And at this point, technology makes it so you don't even need to turn the damn letter. Yeah. We'll see what happens. It doesn't even mention Vanna White here, but I would assume. I assume she's not retiring. I, I assume she's not retiring. Keep yeah. going. Why not? All good. All good. Incredible. What a, what a thing. Modelo sells. Uh, Modelo sales. They are now taking over. Their uh, Bud Light lost his title as America's top selling beer. Modelo is now the top selling beer. But isn't Modelo a property of Anheuser Busch? I don't see that here. Let's find out. I'm pretty sure. Who owns? I like Modelo, by the way. Modelo. I'm wrong. It's the Medella Group. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Well, UFC sponsors are coming on strong. That's for sure. Hey, uh, TJ, get ready for this. This is going to be a UPS workers. Uh-huh. May have a nationwide strike. That's interesting. Yeah, that's going to be bad. That's not. That's not good for anybody. I mean, FedEx will just get more work, no? More expensive, more expensive. Starbucks. There's a lady that, you know, these these lawsuits, I tell you, you get a smart attorney, it doesn't matter what happens. And I'm not saying that she doesn't deserve whatever she got. But a jury on Monday found in favor of a former Starbucks regional director. Mm -hmm. She sued the company for wrongfully firing her. Okay. Claiming she was terminated. Get this. Claiming she was terminated for being white. Okay. And um, she worked for Starbucks for 13 years, mm -hmm. managed a region of stores, was fired after the arrest of two black men at a Philadelphia Starbucks. I'm not sure how that story came down. Um, the New Jersey jury returned a verdict, and they're giving her $25.6 million, uh, $25 million for punitive damages. Get this. This is what hear, – hear this out. 600000 in compensatory damages. Compensatory. Com compensatory. 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 Like a, like a UFC name, I got to work. It's all right. You're all right. The jury ruled unanimously after a six day trial. Okay. And what happens now is, you know, the judge goes, okay, 600,000. There's your money. But they can award anything they want. Right. So he goes yeah. and awards them $25 million in punitive damages. Wow. That's not going to hold up, though. You know that. They'll appeal that. They'll appeal that down. And uh, yeah, I mean, because it's ludicrous. Got to like get something, TJ. Sure, but how are you going to end up getting twenty five million when you wouldn't make twenty five million in that position if you worked there for twenty five million years? I don't know. I don't know. But this, this, it's something worse than that. Six people have been charged for trafficking human remains stolen from the morgue at Harvard Medical School. What? Six people have been charged with. No, I heard you. I remains. heard. Yeah, that's crazy. Brains, brains were sold. Oh, and skin mm. was turned. And skin mm. was turned into leather. Mm. What, Gross. The, what the i hear Seriously? you i hear you buff you want to be like what the i don't get it i don't get it did you watch the soccer game? i was doing a big appearance for um very uh, thanks for everybody turned out at legend sports bar in long beach uh last night i went down there and signed a ton of bottles and i bartended and gave shots to everybody it was a lot of fun i posted on my instagram if you want to check it out um and you know, I signed the bottles and I looked on eBay. There are people selling the bottles for $150. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. But I had a really good time. I had a really good time down there at, at Long Beach. And um, when I was down there, they had the U.S.-Mexico soccer match on TV. Yeah. But they cut it short. It says people were yelling a homophobic chance. 
which has no place in the game. They, the game was stopped at McGaysler's at Allegiant Stadium in Vegas. I don't – why? Well, this is news to me. Is this last night? Yeah. They halted it in the 90th minute because of the home – when action resumed, 12 minutes of stoppage time was singled. Uh, but the chance – but resumed chance caused referee to end the match completely with the eighth minute added. Wow. I, why? I don't know. FIFA fined Mexico 100,000 Swiss francs in January for anti for anti gay chance by fans at two games. Why would they fan? Why would they find Mexico if the fans are are doing that? I don't know. That's crazy. I don't get it. I don't get it. Doesn't make but sense. I mean, the game is pretty much over. No, U.S. won three nothing. Yeah, it's pretty much over. Uh, listen, I want to recommend everybody on TV and and film Netflix. Yeah, uh, the Schwarzenegger three uh, episode documentary is fantastic. Yeah, I have uh, I put it on my to watch list. I have not actually uh, gone down the rabbit hole yet, but it's it's on the to do list, if you will. Well, you know, one thing about that is you got to realize too, and I've said this before on the show, but uh, Schwarzenegger was buying income property, and uh, he would lay bricks with Franco Colombo, his weightlifting partner at the University of Wisconsin. He was a millionaire before he ever became the bodybuilder, the famous bodybuilder. He was good for him. That's great. Very smart. This is very. It's a very good show for entrepreneurs to watch. Um, and check it out. I highly recommend it. Uh, now, a little collectible talk before we get off the show. Are the Jordan shoes from the flu game? Yep. 1.3 million. Wow. How much uh, from a ticket stub autograph from that game? Um, I don't know, but Brian has a personalized autograph one. From I know. Michael Jordan, thanks to his loving brother, Bruce, who could have kept it for himself, but I gave it to my brother. So it's, okay. it's nice of you, Buff. You know what makes me sick? What? Or what grinds my gears, as they say in The Simpsons. Yeah. And I, and I and I know these causes are well done. I know that listen, PETA and 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 climate Peter. activists and whatever, but you don't have to do this. Two climate activists were detained at a Swedish museum. Mm -hmm. They took a bunch of red paint, TJ, and they threw it on a world famous Monet painting. No. And then they and then they glued themselves to the painting, TJ. Why? You're just destroying something. I, I why do you destroy something to make a point about something not being destroyed? Yeah, that's why? ridiculous. So it was make it right, Buff. It doesn't sound right. They they wanted to uh, asking that peat mining be banned to restore the Swedish wetlands. Okay, then do what okay. do yeah. what do what it is through proper ways. I'm looking at this. This is horrible, TJ. Right? Yeah, it's terrible. This is the latest activist to start a, a targeted piece of art. One Van Gogh's famous flowers, sunflowers, uh -huh. was doused in tomato soup, and a cake was smeared over the Mona Lisa, and another Monet painting got covered with mashed potatoes. Why? A cake was smeared over the Mona Lisa? The Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa. Dang. Why? Rome's Trevi Fountain, like the huge famous fountain, was dyed black by climate activists. Why? I don't understand. I mean, it's like rioting and burning up your own city that you live in. Why? Oh, man. I, I, I'm looking I'm at the Mona Lisa with cake say. on I'm it right bad. now. What's that? I'm looking at the Mona Lisa with cake on it right now. Great. Let's Steve Aoki throw cakes in people's faces, not on the Mona Lisa. Seriously. All right, TJ, let's wrap up the show. I got to go train. All right. Get out of here. Go train. Follow me on Twitter at TJ DeSantis. That's it. That's all I got. All right. Follow me on Instagram at Bruce Buffer UFC is where I post everything coming up. Um, get ready for some big announcements coming up. Big, TJ. Big. Not small. Huge. Nice. All right. Okay. I'm ready. All right, everybody. Set your goals. Write them down. Be a role model to your sphere of influence. When you set on that path, that yellow brick, blah, 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 that yellow brick road to your future, have confidence. BSC, ball skill and confidence, a little bit of a luck factor, and know what you're talking about. Know what you're pitching. Know who you are. Be passionate about what you do. And the world is your oyster. You'll be winning. Whether you're first, second champion or not, be the best you can be, and that's what winning's all about. That's what I'm all about. That's what TJ's all about. That's what his time radio is all about. And above all, please be a role model to your sphere of influence. We talk about enough situations in this decaying society and morality we live in. Let's stay strong. Let's keep it going. God bless America. Buffer out.